hey, this is just about me a bit. Um, it just a bit of a fill-in while I make the next 25-foot Bertram project video. Um, this is a boat that I bought for $1,000. It's a Savage Commander, 18 and a half foot. Um, no trailer. Everything was rotted. The stringers were rot. Transom was rotted out. I don't have that many pictures of, of when um, I did it up, but these were the first first ones when I got it. I was 19 years old. Made everything very heavy. But this is where I got started. I used epoxy resin, some good wood to glue it in, and then um, polyester resin, fiberglass on the outside, lots of fairing. I bought this 140 mercury blue band for $100, less than a dollar a horse. You can see why it really, the motor wasn't too bad. Like, we'll never remember, the, I'll, I'll never forget the time I first started it up and we took it for a test run. I never thought it was gonna get on the plane, but it did and it lasted nearly a year. Um, it mainly just needed new wiring. Everything else was all right. We managed to get the bolts out you know, normally the bolts are something that gets seized. I uh, coated the, this, that bit there, I coated the bottom of the boat with epoxy resin because I was planning on leaving the boat in the water anti fouled because my parents had a house on the water. There's the mercury in its glory. This is when I first put the boat in the water. I didn't even have a windscreen. I just wanted to see it floating. Nothing's hooked up. Everything's rough. I um, wanted to put a big sound system in it. Um, I ended up putting a 12 inch subwoofer in, in the front there. So I sacrificed half of the anchor compartment for a subwoofer box. Um, and they pretty much got given the Jeep, I got given the GPS and the sounder. The subwoofer was a broken one that I I got from someone else, and yeah, I struggled to get it together with the money that I had at the time. But I, I did it because I so badly wanted to do it, and um, it really got my confidence up and made me a different person. is actually after so yeah that's what it was like at its prime these pictures aren't quite in all in, but that was to show you what the back of the boat looked like before it had a live bait tank this is a live bait tank that I built for the back of the boat um, it was all made out of wood and and had some fiberglass on it and, and it lasted a couple of years, but it got real daggy real fast. So I ended up cutting it up and um, I made a mold out of it and because I wanted to make it with fiberglass and I used grease for release agent, which I don't recommend to anyone because it was a son of a bee to get, get apart and uh, yeah, a valuable lesson I learnt. But I um, managed to do it with the minimal tools that I had. My son's bedroom is actually where the boat is at the moment. The 
hasn't changed a lot. I can do another video about that. But that's the bottom of the live bait tank. I, I formed it by just laying tape in the well in the transom and I've probably used grease and Vaseline and anything that looks slippery and that's how I made the bottom. So I still made the back bit out of wood, the bit that flips over the back of the transom. That's how dusty, that's how sad and dusty. You can see the skeleton it's starting to come together. Still lots of work. Oh yeah, I got 140 Suzuki from a commercial fisherman for a good price because it had so many hours on it. I actually have another 140 Suzuki on it because I ended up having a, over five and a half thousand hours on that Suzuki. I, I like I like the, those motors, they're easy to work on, um, but they do have issues, but so does everything, but at least it's easy to work on. <laughs> and they're starting to ferret the live bait tank a little bit there. We're spraying a panel, I don't know why I put that in. That's what the back of the boat looks like without the live bait tank. A lot of wasted space. That's the dummy fitting it. So after I made the basic shape to get it to make a perfect fit, I tape around the edges and, and then fiberglass to the, the tape and then crack it out and grind it and make it look good. I put my fiberglass wires and LEDs into the tank, which actually lasted a very long time. They still, still go good. There's me at work being an idiot. Another silly thing that I did is I made the lids. I still made them with wood and, and I thought, by undersizing the lids and then fiberglassing the hell out of the outsides and the the, the over the top, I'd I'd um, make it strong enough that that it's about ten years old now and it, the fiberglass is starting to delaminate from a couple of the corners of the the lids, but it's still definitely usable. I could probably still fix it, but I'm doing the 25 foot Bertram now, so that's the, uh, with the silver base coat with clear over the top, with all the LEDs in their glory, that's it, fitted. There were lots of times where I wanted to give up, but when it got to this stage, that's all I wanted to do is work on the boat. My neighbours hated me. <laughs> and they still probably wish that I just lived in an industrial estate like what I actually wish I did. And I always had underwater lights on the transom and then I thought it was going to be an awesome idea to put lights under the actual hull as well because I like going in lots of shallow areas and the fish go absolutely nuts with all the lights on um, but the lights that were under the boat I had to drill holes underneath the boat and then I, I just glued 
with epoxy and you know the strips that that's the panels that I made for inside the boat I made a door that folds into the roof that I never use because the boat's so small and I don't know it's good to keep thieves out I guess but it actually turned out really well it it works awesome it's just I never use it because it's just extra weight I guess so I should probably take that out um, yeah, it doesn't have the bow rail anymore because the boat went under the pontoon because the rope snapped and and then it went high tide and then crumpled the bow rail there's the pontoon it got stuck under that's it it's got no bow rail in that picture yeah here's some fish that we caused to be a fishing one of my friends, Jake, got that fish, which is actually the Australian record cobia spearfish, like a kilo under the world record. Is that being stupid? So, definitely got my money's worth out of the boat. The boat that's actually on the right is my brother's boat. That's another project that I did. I was going to make a movie on that as well. I've got lots of pictures of that. Here's us being stupid in rough waves. Bad weather. It's only about 10 minutes away from, from land. It's an awesome boat that handles the rough really well for its size because of how narrow it is and, and the, the V and how heavy it is. It's definitely the pig getting out of the water because I've put a steep pitch prop on and normally I don't have too many people in the boat so Having a tall, a, a, a steep pitch propeller makes it um, nice and quiet. And rev, it, rev, it still revs out, doesn't get to 6,000. I don't even think it gets to 5,500, but it sounds nice and, and it, it's good on fuel. Yeah, it's gone through so many stages with kids change everything. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Watching. Press like if you liked it.